taking a stand, forfeiting a game with the playoffs on the line after a member of the opposing team allegedly used a homophobic slur against a gay player on the San Diego Loyal. In just a moment, we're going to talk exclusively to that player, Colin Martin, and to the coach, soccer le legend Landon Donovan. But first, TJ is back with the latest fallout. Good morning to you, hey, TJ. Good morning. And Stray, you understand this better than most. There's mm -hmm. trash talk in professional sports, right? Oh, Some yeah. guys are actually celebrated for it. Some trash talk can actually be funny. It can be profane. It can be harsh. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about an allegation of something that crossed a line into hate and bigotry. And when the ref wouldn't do something about it, an entire team did. All right, folks, San Diego is walking off the field. You're seeing an entire professional soccer team walk off the pitch mid-match in protest. But obviously San Diego feels that what happened was unacceptable. And they the San Diego Loyal, coached by U.S. soccer legend Landon Donovan, decided to take a stand, refusing to continue playing after an opposing player allegedly used an anti-gay slur. This is a group of guys that will support each other to the end. After San Diego player Colin Martin was mistakenly given a red card, ejecting him from the game. We got a red issued for Colin Martin. Martin's teammates swarmed the ref, insisting the wrong guy had been penalized. Then Martin's coach, Donovan, storms the field. He's trying to get an answer out of the referee. Donovan drawing a line, coming face to face with Phoenix coach Rick Shantz over the anti-gay slur. This is beyond soccer. Guys, just this, is, soccer. this is what's going on. We have to get this out of our game. We have to get this out of our game. We're going to play our game. It's not racism, it's calling gay. Competing. It's homophobia. How long have you been playing soccer? Guys, listen, this is what's going to happen. The, the Phoenix coach denies he was downplaying the alleged slur, claiming he was only asking about Donovan's reaction, tweeting, in no way was I excusing any alleged homophobic behavior from my players. Martin's teammates huddle around him in support before they all leave the pitch and forfeit a match they were leading. Martin, who is openly gay, released a statement saying, an exchange between Junior Flemings and myself escalated to the point of him calling me an expletive, which is a homophobic slur. Meanwhile, Flemings, the Phoenix player accused of making the abusive comment, issued a denial, writing, at no point did I say a homophobic slur towards Colin Martin. I stand in solidarity with the LGBTQ plus movement. This incident comes just a week after a separate incident where San Diego loyal player Elijah Martin was allegedly called a racial slur by another opposing team. The loyal forfeited that game in protest as well. And the loyal by forfeiting this game, guys, they're essentially giving up any chance of possibly making the playoffs. Also, that Phoenix coach and the player who allegedly made that slur have both now been put on administrative leave. Sure. None of it had any place in any sport or in life in general. So thank you so much for that, TJ. Now we're joining us exclusively to talk about this incident is Colin Martin, who is speaking out for the first time in his coach, soccer legend Landon Donovan. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us so much. And, and Colin, we just watched the piece. We, we, we saw what went down there at the game. Can you take us back to that moment on the field and what happened from your perspective and what was going through your mind? Good morning, Michael. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I was pretty shocked. Um, it obviously was an exchange that first started with some 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 uh, bad language. That's that's normal. It happens. Um, but it but it escalated to a place where it crossed the line. And um, it, I'm just at a point where uh, in my career I'm an out gay player, and um, I can't stand for having a homophobic slur said to me during a game. So um, it was it was pretty upsetting. And uh, honestly, it took me a little bit to totally soak in what was what was said to me but um i'm honestly proud of myself for for, for bringing it to the ref and um and not standing for it and colin you shouldn't have to stand for that and, and i think a lot of people are proud for you for doing that and and your coach i know he's proud of you as well and he had your back and landed i want to talk to you for a second because this wasn't just a game there was a playoff spot a, pl a spot in the playoffs on the line and you guys were were winning going at halftime so how did you make the decision to come out after half and forfeit Good morning, Michael. Um, I think the context matters quite a bit. Uh, the week before, a uh, play on our team, Elijah Martin, uh, was exposed to a, a racial slur. And we, we went back and forth all week on whether we should even play this next game because we were, we were pretty upset about it. And then we were also upset that we didn't say anything during the game. 
So sometimes the world's trying to teach us things. And of course, the next week, um, this happens. And I, I give Colin tremendous credit because in the, as you know, Michael, in the heat of the battle, you want to play and you want to compete. And when you're beating a rival really badly, uh, you just want to finish the game and win the game. But Colin, to his immense credit, said something, he acted and he spoke. And we just decided that if, if that player was not going to be removed from the game, either through a red card by the referee or from the other team subbing him off the field, that we had to act. And so I give our team a ton of credit for taking that stand. And Colin, I know you tweeted that your team had your back and you found their response truly moving. But what was it like for you to have this for them, for you to have their support? Yeah, it was it was pretty incredible. Um, to be honest, at halftime in the locker room when, I mean, Landon was pretty adamant right away that he, he wanted us off the field. Um, and obviously we, we took the time at halftime to, um, to, to hear everything that happened and to, to see what the team wanted to move forward with. And they were all adamant that they were, we weren't going to play. Um, so I, I, I was pretty uncomfortable by it, to be honest. Um, it, it was a big game for, for the team and, and we were winning. And I, I thought, let's just, finish the game, let's beat them and, and, and move on with it. Um, but I, I mean, they weren't having it. So I, I'd say like I was one of the few guys that was like, no, let's please just play the game. But um, I mean, I, I can't say how thankful I am for them just to, to step up for me and um, to know that I was hurt and, and down and to know it wasn't right. And um, yeah, I, I, I can't believe how yeah thankful I am to have the teammates I do. Yeah, great teammates indeed. And Landon, you, we saw your incredible exchange with the other coach where you said, quote, we have to get this out of our game. So how pervasive is homophobia and bias in the sport? Well, the strange thing is, Michael, the week before I told you about the racial slur uh, that was hurled at one of our players and it was interesting because during the week we were talking with the coaching staff about how in the early 2000s when I was playing, and you probably remember this too, um, gay slurs were used quite often. And it, it was almost like a normal thing and people said it quite often until uh, a stand was finally taken and people just didn't, didn't accept it anymore. So we thought that that was sort of out of our game, but then of course the next week uh, we're faced with this. So. It's not, um, it's not something we hear every week and there's not uh, bigotry or homophobia expressed every week. But like I said, I think the world was trying to tell us something and it's still clearly around and we just have to get it out of our game. It cannot be in any sports environment. It can't be in our society. And unfortunately, the only way that change happens is by doing something drastic. I mean, it's why we're here today, right? And and I, I just, again, give our guys a ton of credit for doing what was right, even though it was the most difficult decision to make. And a difficult decision indeed. And as you said, it's just not just soccer. I've heard it in football as well. And there's no place for that in society or in sports. I want to thank you both so much for joining me. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much.